Hey guys, it's Sarah. It's currently snowing. It's February 1st right now, and we are getting that nor'easter storm that has come through <laughs> to, I think we're at the tail end of the storm. It's been coming across like pretty much the north, and now it's our turn. So we're getting it today. My girls are off school. They have a snow day today, so they don't even have to do any distance learning. They are ecstatic. And yeah, we're just kind of sitting, waiting for the storm to start. It's actually kind of started already. And uh, we will see what we end up getting throughout the day. But it's supposed to go all day long. And we're supposed to get between five and eight inches of snow. So we will see. So while that's happening outside, let's talk about all the books that I read in January. January was a fantastic reading month for me. I read everything on my TBR plus a little something extra. And I read 11 books. And that's a really, really good month for me. Starting off the year, I read something, I finished something that I was in the middle of already. So I started this in December, finished it in the very beginning of January. And that is Thunderhead by Neil Schusterman, which is book number two in the Ark of the Scythe series. And I loved this with my entire body. Let me tell you, this it's the second book in a series, so I don't want to go too into detail about it, but I love the direction that this took and where the characters went on their journeys. The villain in here is insanely crazy, like just completely relentless, ruthless. It was fantastic. And it was just action, action, action. And I loved it. I loved it so much. I just really like the concept of this. So if you have not heard of Scythe, which is the first book in this series, it follows a utopian world set in the future where death has been pretty much abolished. You can't really die. You can't get into a car accident and die. You can't get cancer. Um, like not, you can't die basically on your own. There are healing centers where you can go if you do get hurt and you do become deadish, <laughs> you can recover and continue and live your life. So because of that, the population still needs to be under somewhat control. Otherwise, we're just going to completely tear up this planet, right? And so there are scythes who are in charge of deciding who is going to actually die. And then they actually have to go and kill those people. And then once you have been chosen by a scythe, you are dead. You can't come back. So, uh, this one just follows the events of the first book and it's so good. So I just don't want to spoil anything, but if you have not, if you've read Scythe and really liked it and have not picked up Thunderhead, I liked this one better than Scythe and I loved Scythe. So this is big time five stars for me. The next one that I picked up was a book that I buddy read and I buddy read this with Tia and Kelly and we read The Haunting of Maddie Claire by Simone St. James. This was also picked out of my TBR jar for a book with a character's name in the title. So I got that one um, checked off and then this was also a book sent to me by Krista from our Christmas book exchange. So checked off a few boxes <laughs> with this one here. And this is a ghost story that follows Maddie Claire, who is the ghost in here. She is a girl who died young and something very tragic happened to her. And she is haunting the barn of the house where she was living at the time when she was killed. And so the whole premise of this is that there's almost a ghost hunter, like a little team of ghost hunters, if you will. So they are going to this house because they have been contacted by the family saying that they need her out because she is a very angry ghost. Maddie Claire is not, she's not looking for peace. She's looking for revenge, basically. So we follow our ghost hunter and he ends up hiring a young woman to go with him thinking that maybe she the ghost will respond to her better versus a man because she does not like men. <laughs> so we're following that and then another man who is on the team joins them eventually. And you kind of follow all that. And they, you know, have to go and confront Maddie and try to see what they can do about this. So that's the whole premise of the story. The thing about this is that I liked this book a lot. I did give it four stars. Um, 
But there is a romance in here that I did not enjoy. It was very aggressive. It was very <sighs> abrupt. Um, there were just, I don't know, every single scene, like it was all consensual and all that. It wasn't anything like that. But I don't know, their encounters were very rough and just really aggressive. And I just didn't, it made me cringe almost. Like, I don't mind, you know, I don't mind some rough things, but it was uncomfortable rough for me. And I just didn't enjoy it. So anytime there was a love scene, which there were a few in here, I just went, I don't like this. <laughs> so I didn't like that aspect of it. So the romance was like, I liked that they had a relationship. So I didn't mind that the romance was there. Just the love scenes were just too much. Like just, they were very angry. Um, and so I didn't, I didn't end up enjoying it because of that. So there's that. And, but I did really like how this book went. There is a part at the end where I feel like we were seeing some of the action from afar and I wish we were more into it. So there was that too. Um, but it was really good. I really did enjoy it. I thought it was definitely creepy, had very gothic feels. And um, Simone St. James is just a fantastic writer. The writing really drew me in pretty early on. And I gave it four stars. The next book that I finished is another one that I started a while ago, actually. But it's something that I was working on very slowly. I was taking notes, doing all that stuff. And that is The Lazy Genius Way by Kendra Adachi. And this is a nonfiction book all about the lazy genius way. The whole concept behind it is to be lazy about the things that don't matter and be a genius about the things that do matter to you in your life and concentrating on the things that do matter and letting go of the things that don't matter and, you know, creating shortcuts for the things that don't matter, even though they're things that need to be done, even though you don't enjoy them, make them as easy as possible. And then you can focus on the things that do matter to you. And that's where you should be thriving in your life. And I loved this. I thought it was fantastic. There are 13, I believe, different principles that she follows and that she highlights in here. Not every single one of them applied to me in our current situation in life. And that's normal. Not everything is going to apply. But the things that did apply really made an impact on me and helped me to really realize what is important in my life and what I'm prioritizing and Am I prioritizing the things that matter? It's a, that's a big wake up call for this one. And I really, really loved it. She also has a podcast called the Lazy Genius Podcast. So I have been listening to little episodes of that too. And those are fantastic. And they're really short. They're only like 20 minutes long. So it's really easy for me to listen to, you know, one or three in the car while I'm driving. But, um, yeah, I really, really like this. Gave it five stars. I think it's really helpful. The next book that I finished it was Invisible Girl. This is by Lisa Jewell. And this book was a NetGalley book. So I was able to check that one off, which was great. I picked it out of my NetGalley jar. And this one is an adult, I would say a mystery suspense book. It's not really a thriller, but it follows a family who is living in the middle of a city. And they're there temporarily while their house is getting renovated. And while they are there, there is a string of sexual assault attacks happening on women in their neighborhood, like in their general area. And they have very strong suspicions that there is a man who is living across the street from them who could very well be the person who's committing these acts. And you follow them along with a girl who goes missing. And this girl is a psychiatric patient of the man who's living in the fam the family house. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> so the family lives here. Creepy man lives here. This man is a psychologist and or a psychiatrist and is treating a young girl. That young girl goes missing. Everyone thinks it's this man, right? Okay. So you're following all of these little scenarios happening. Now, this is interesting because you get the perspective from the wife of the family and you are also getting the perspective from the young girl who goes missing and you're getting the perspective from the man across the street who everyone is suspecting so you're getting these three different perspectives in the story and it was um it was good it was interesting it kept me guessing I was trying to guess the whole time who this person was that was uh, committing these attacks on people and I didn't figure it out <laughs> which is good um, the thing though, is that 
there are different scenarios, you know, different instances that people are being, you know, investigated for and like being asked questions and all these things. <sighs> one of the big problems I had was that there was one specific night, I think when this girl went missing and three different people were questioned and all three of these people were drunk. So they were unreliable, right? And I just went, okay. <laughs> I just feel like that's a trope that's so overdone at this point because, you know, you have girl on the train and you have the woman in the window and like it just... And while I loved those books because they were, you know, that was a new concept at the time, now I just feel like it's been so overdone that I'm tired of seeing characters who can't give reliable witness accounts because they were drunk. I was like, of course you were. <laughs> of course you were. So it almost seems like an easy thing to put into a book to make things complicated. And I just, I wish it would have been a little bit different. Um... So, yeah, I don't know. That just kind of went, uh, okay, I didn't enjoy that part of it, definitely. And it was like the main thing that happened. So there's that, definitely. And, but I mean, overall, I did still really enjoy the book. It was just that one little, and that was just, you know, like one instance, but it was the main crime that happened in the book that we're trying to figure out. And of course, there's three unreliable narrators. Of course there is. And... Other than that, <laughs> I enjoyed the story. I liked that I was not able to figure it out. And so overall, I did enjoy the book. I just wish that the unreliable narrator thing could go in a different direction. You know, like, I just want something a little bit more original from an unreliable narrator standpoint. I don't mind unreliable narrators. I just want something other than they were drunk. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I just feel like it's getting a little old at this point. But I still did give this book four stars. There are content warnings in this one. So there is um, obviously assault, um, sexual assault. There is some domestic abuse that happens in this book. And there is also self-harm. So those are some things to be aware of before going into this book if you decide to pick it up. But yeah, four stars. And the next one that I picked up is one that was not actually on my TBR. I just picked it up on a whim. <laughs> and that is Voyage of Mercy by Stephen Puglio. Now this one is a book that my daughter Layla got me for my birthday, which is awesome. So in 18, let me see, 1847, the um, USS Jamestown was used so that the American people can put supplies. Um, the government was he heavily involved as well. You know, they had to like approve all this stuff because they needed to use funds to be able to provide all these things so that the Americans can take this ship over to Ireland to give relief during the potato famine that happened at this time. So people in Ireland were literally dying. They were literally falling over dead from starvation and like limited supplies because of the potato famine that happened. So um, a man named Robert Bennett Forbes is the person who was selected to basically command and take over the planning execution of this entire relief. And he was in contact with other Theobald Matthew from Ireland. So they were in contact with each other, coordinating this whole thing. And so it follows, you know, kind of both what's happening on both ends of it and then the journey and then the relief. And this was pretty interesting, actually. It was written really well. I ended up listening to it on audiobook and it told almost like a story, which was great. I really enjoyed the congressional part of this, which was a little surprising for me, but I enjoyed the debates that were happening about whether or not this should even happen because the U.S. had never used its own funding in order to help an outside country in this way. They've never done that before. And so there's a lot of debate on whether or not that should even be happening. A lot of people didn't agree with it. So that was interesting. Um, and then there were some scenes in here that took part 
on the water uh, that was actually pretty kind of like, ooh. <laughs> you know, there was um, some maritime emergency things happening and that was kind of like almost thrilling in a nonfiction book. It was kind of cool. So yeah, I enjoyed it. I thought it was really interesting. And it, this stuff happened a little like kind of locally to where we are now. And um, the ship went out of Boston. And that was a big thing because, you know, in Boston, there's a lot of, there were a lot of Irish immigrants who, you know, went and settled in Boston, still are. So uh, yeah, but it was pretty interesting. I gave it four stars. And the next one that I read is Brown Girl Dreaming by Jacqueline Woodson. This is the book that Riley picked out for me from my TBR jar. And it is also the buzzword book that I picked for the month. The buzzword was dream. And so Brown Girl Dreaming. This is a nonfiction memoir told about Jacqueline's childhood growing up between New York City and her grandparents' house in South Carolina. It's also written in verse. Now... <laughs> Here's the thing with this book. It, the story was definitely interesting. Um, I did enjoy learning about how she grew up. Now, she is growing up in between two very different time periods in the 1960s, where, you know, you're in New York and, you know, um, Black people were treated better up there, still not completely great. And then when she goes to her grandparents' house in South Carolina, it's a completely different story, right? Um, they were very much discriminated against all over the place. And so it was interesting to see the differences and the dynamics between that. Definitely um, felt the hardships that she was experiencing. So I totally got that. Um, one thing I didn't enjoy in this book is all the talk about her religion, which I understand religion is a big thing. You know, you base your life around it a lot of the time. Um, but it was a lot <laughs> in here. And I was just kind of like, every time it, it got brought up, I was like, okay, here we go again. So I didn't enjoy that aspect of it. And I'm also really realizing something about myself. I don't think I love books that are written in verse. I read a few. Um, I liked some of the Ellen Hopkins books, but I haven't read all of them. And then Jason Reynolds book, Long Way Down is amazing. And that is written in verse. So that's really like the big one that has really worked for me. And then other books that I've read in verse, I just haven't really enjoyed that much. So I think that's a me thing. <laughs> I know a lot of people do enjoy books written in verse. I just, I feel like now moving forward, if something's written in verse, I might shy away from it a little bit. I don't know. Um, so I ended up giving this one three stars. The story was interesting. I didn't like the religious talk. And, you know, the fact that it was written in verse just didn't really do it for me all that much. So, um, yeah. So it was a three star read for me. And I also picked up Heartbones by Colleen Hoover. This book was the TBR jar pick for the first on an Instagram scroll. That was the first one that popped up. And then I also buddy read this with Chloe from Always Booked. I will leave her link down below. If you haven't checked out her channel, please do. She's fantastic. And I enjoy getting to talk to her and get to know her a little bit better as well. So this one is a young adult book, which I was a little bit surprised. I thought this was going to be more new adult, but it's, it's young adult. And... This one follows a girl. Her name is Bea. I don't love that name. <laughs> and I don't know why, but every time, I don't know, it just, it kind of made me tick a little bit. I don't know what, it, I don't know what it was. Chloe didn't like it either. And I have another friend who read this who didn't like it either. So I was like, okay, well, I'm not alone at least. But we're following Bea. Bea um, is working at McDonald's. She is living in a trailer home. She has a mother who is addicted to drugs and her father is not there. Uh, he lives with his new family in Texas. So Bea comes home one night and finds her mother who has overdosed. So she is stuck in this really sticky situation because she doesn't really have anywhere to go now. And she's being kicked out of the trailer home. So she ends up calling her dad and saying, I need a place to stay for a little bit. Can I come stay with you for a few weeks? And 
he says, absolutely, I'll get you a plane ticket. So she goes to Texas to stay with him for a little bit. While she is there, she meets a boy named Samson, who is living in his parents' rental home, basically next door to Bea's dad. And they strike up (laughs) a friendship that turns into more. And you see them really, this is a very typical calling, like all encompassing passion type of relationship. However, they are both keeping secrets from each other. They are both um, very timid to open up to each other, even though they have this very, very strong bond. They feel like they both have similar, you know, they've been in similar situations and, um, you know, feel the same way about certain things. And then it just becomes all consuming. Okay. And So basically, all of Samson's secrets start coming out, right? And it just kind of all comes to a head. And I didn't guess what was going on with him at all, which was good. And my problem, though, with it was that I didn't like that Bea really started opening up to him pretty quickly. She just, she gained you know, she trusted him and, you know, trusted him with all her secrets, he would not open up to her even a little bit. And I was like, this seems a little one sided to me, (laughs) I think I'd probably be out. (laughs) But okay. Um, It's also some small talk about weight and body image between Bea and her stepsister, which I thought was going to maybe go somewhere because it was brought up a few times. Um, basically, Bea is very skinny. However, she's like that because she doesn't always want to know when her next meal is going to come. <laughs> and then her sister is very privileged, has all the food available to her that she wants. And so she weighs a little bit more, but she has very negative body image of herself. And it was brought up a couple times, like the comparisons and all that stuff. And so I thought maybe Colleen would go somewhere with that and do something with it. But nothing ever really happened with that. It just kind of got dropped. And I thought that was a little bit of a missed opportunity. I thought she could have maybe created a really positive conversation about body image, but didn't really go anywhere. So then I kind of wondered why it was even in the book in the first place. So there's that. And I ended up liking this a lot. I just didn't love it. It wasn't a five-star Colleen experience for me. So I did give it four stars. It's probably more three and a half, but I rounded it up to four because I did still really enjoy it. And I read it in two days. It was very, very fast. All her books end up like that for me. I just kind of fly through them. And there are content warnings in here, definitely for drug abuse and overdose. So, and death of a parent. So like, those are things that are in here for sure um, to keep in mind. But yeah. Okay. That's it for this one. Next one that I finished was The Bookshop of Second Chances by Jackie Frazier. This is another book that I picked out from my neck galley. So I read both of my neck galley books. I'm very proud of myself for that one. This one does not come out until May of this year. So it's an upcoming release. And this one follows a woman and she is older. She's in her 40s and she is experiencing big life changes that were not her plan, basically. Her uh, husband has been unfaithful to her and she realizes this and discovers it. And her great uncle also passes away and leaves her his house in Scotland. So she was living in Sussex and now she's inherited this house from a man she barely knows, part of her family, and it's in Scotland. So she decides this could be a really just good escape for me to get away from all these issues that are occurring in my life right now. So she goes out to this house to kind of check it out, see what the deal is, find out all the details, you know, no real uh, plan of action going forward when she goes. So she goes to this house, which is located in this really charming, cute little town. It's a very small area of small community, all that stuff. And she starts to get to know people in the town and she doesn't really know what she wants to do yet with the house. She's just kind of figuring things out. Come to find out he has a huge library full of 
first edition books that are very, very valuable. And so she takes a few of them over to a local bookshop to see if maybe she could sell them, get them appraised, all that stuff. And she meets the bookshop owner there. So she decides to stay for a little while, doesn't really have any big plans. She has inherited a decent amount of money, so she doesn't need to work, but she ends up actually working at this bookshop and she basically does it so that she can just kind of acclimate herself into the community a little bit more, see if she wants to stay. She also does have a big passion for books and reading and you see her interaction with the bookshop owner there, which turns into more <laughs> than just an employee relationship, right? Uh, so you're kind of just following her journey, figuring all this out. You're following their relationship as it starts blooming. And it was very charming. It was a really charming book. I really did enjoy it. I actually read it pretty quickly. And I think, you know, I read this on my Kindle, but I think the print book was over 400 pages for a contemporary, which is really long, but it didn't feel that long for me. I was able to read a lot of it, like big chunks and small amount of time. Now, I loved their relationship. I loved the relationship between the two. He is very, has a reputation of being very grumpy and just not a very nice person, but she brings out the best in him, definitely. And you see that and it's really cute. And some one thing I did have a little bit of a hard time with was some of the dialogue in the book where a lot, and this is the way it was written, was there's a lot of sentences that get cut off very short and quick. And it's a lot of, you know, a sentence in the middle of the sentence, dot, 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 like they're kind of just ending the sentence, but they're not complete yet. You know, it's like not a complete thought. And then there's a lot of dot, dot, dots. There's a lot of dashes where they get cut off. And it was, it was choppy to read. Like there would be an entire conversation like that where one or the other would do that constantly or both of them constantly back and forth. And it was like, it just felt very choppy trying to read it. So it was hard to read very fluidly, if that makes any sense. There was also a love scene that was closed door. It was a closed door love scene, but leading up to the love scene where you know it's going to happen and they're getting there finally. And the main character wouldn't shut up. She just kept talking and talking and talking and talking. I was like, would you shut up and get down to business already? I literally like thought that in my head. I wanted her to stop talking because it made things awkward. And the way that they were like their dialogue back and forth was like, this is not sexy. This is not a sexy like time. <laughs> and they're about to do this thing. And they're having the most awkward conversation. And it sounds like she doesn't even know if she wants to, but it's going to happen. And I don't know. It was just... I don't know. It was very awkward for me. And like, I was happy that it was finally happening for them. But at the same time, it just seemed so awkward to me. So that was weird. And there are a couple of content warnings in this one too. Um, definitely the um, adultery. There's adultery in here. And it's there's some adultery on multiple, not just from her. There's some adultery on other, other couples and stuff as well. And then there is um, some talk about miscarriage in here as well. So if that's something you're sensitive to, something to think about. But overall, I did give this book four stars. I really did enjoy it. There were just those couple little things, but I read through it fairly quickly for being how long it was. And I really liked it. And then we will talk about very briefly because I've done entire reading vlogs on these three books, but I did do a reading vlog this month that was books that were 2020 favorites of some other booktubers. So I will talk about these briefly because I did do a whole reading vlog for it. So I will leave that link down below if you guys haven't seen that. But the first one was Lovely War by Julie Berry. This one was a favorite of Haley from Haley and Bookland. And I loved this book with my entire soul. This is top 10 of all time contender for me. I loved it so much. It's a historical fiction that follows two love stories in World War I, but it's told by Greek gods. Aphrodite, Ares, Apollo, Hades. Those are the four Greek gods that tell this story. I love the way the Greek gods were introduced and why they're telling the story. That was really entertaining to me. And 
you spend most of this book in the World War One setting. So it starts out with the Greek gods, and the Greek gods actually were set in the 40s, like right around World War II time as well, so that's interesting. And then you're getting this love story, and you spend most of your time with the love story, but there's little sentences here and there that remind you that Greek gods are telling the stories, so it's, that's fantastic as well. And you kind of go back and forth a little bit between going back to where the Greek gods are and they're interacting with each other and then you're seeing all the stuff and then they get back to the story. So um, I thought that was perfect. And the love stories in here were beautiful <laughs> and um, at times really difficult, really difficult to just kind of process because, you know, you're following a soldier in war. So there, you know, he's in the war and then his love is, you know, waiting for him. And then the other one is they're both together at the same place in the war, but one, one of them is a black soldier in world war one. So that was really hard too. And oh my gosh, it was just, it was beautiful. You guys, this, I hugged it. I almost kissed it. I think that would be a little, well, I don't think it'd be too weird, but like, oh my gosh, I just, it was beautiful. It's such a beautiful book. It's told so uniquely and I couldn't get enough of it. I loved it so, so much. So definitely content warnings in here for um, war situations, like war scenes. There are battle scenes in here that are very detailed and very hard to read and uh, racism is a big thing in here. And there's also like one of these characters is dealing with some PTSD, which of course at the time was not something that was talked about <laughs> or, um, you know, diagnosed the way it is today. This book almost made me cry. <laughs> there were some scenes in here that, um, especially dealing around with the racism that almost like I was tearing up. Um, so those were definitely hard to read as well. And then the cool thing about this is that there are some characters in here, mainly around like some of the black characters are in here that were real people. So they're based on actual people. That was really, really cool. So I did do some research after this to kind of learn more about them, but <sighs> 10 stars. Can I do that? 10 stars. The next one that I read in that vlog is Things You Save in a Fire by Catherine Center. This is my first book by Catherine Center. Will not be my last because I absolutely loved this. This follows a female firefighter who is working in Austin. She gets herself into a sticky situation basically and is um, given the opportunity to actually move to Boston to help with a family member who needs some help. And she decides to take that because she finds herself in a really bad situation in Austin, doesn't really see a way out of it. And so she decides to, you know, I'm going to take this opportunity instead. I'll change stations. We'll get transferred up there and I can just kind of have a little bit of a fresh start. So she goes up there. However, this is a small town. Uh, it is a bro club and they have never had a female firefighter. They don't really want a female firefighter. So she has to deal with that. Now, this one was very entertaining. I really liked it. I thought it was funny. I liked our female character a lot. And you see her dealing with, um, you know, the family situation and with trying to get into the ebb and flow of this new fire station and these men who are not exactly welcoming. So, and she's not the only new one. There's also a rookie there as well, then they start on the same day. So um, that's a whole thing too. But this one definitely had a lot of action in it. I felt like I was watching a season of 911. That's basically what I felt like. And I was even picturing those characters in my head. <laughs> like the characters from that show were the characters in here for me. So that was pretty cool. And um, I really did enjoy it. I gave this one five stars. Um, I flew through it really quickly. I just really, really liked it a lot. I thought it was so entertaining. And I wouldn't change a thing about this one. So there are some content warnings in here as well. There is, you know, obviously sexism happening here. And there is also a rape memory. Um, you don't go through the scene, but you go through a memory with the character. She's remembering the, 
what happened. And so you're getting it from her memory, basically. But that is something that is addressed in here. So big warning for that one, too. But uh, yeah. I loved it. And this one was a favorite of Tia's from Tia and all the books. And the third book I read in that vlog is The Sun to Shine by Anthony Ray Hinton. This was the favorite of Krista from Books and Jams, who's one of my best friends. And this one was also sent to me from her from our book exchange. So very happy about that as well. And this is a nonfiction memoir about a man who was wrongfully accused of a string of murders that happen and he is put on death row <laughs> for almost 30 years. Yeah. And he's in there because he maybe kind of looked like the person who kind of did this because he's black. Okay. <laughs> so, so many things about this book. Number one, I listened to it on audio and it was fantastic on audio. So definitely a high recommend if you if you have this book um, to listen to it because the narrator is so great. And it was funny in parts. I loved him. I fell in love with Anthony and just he's not perfect. He is not a perfect person. He has made some mistakes and he completely owns those. But he didn't do this, basically. And he is just <sighs> such a light in a really, really dark situation. And he made me laugh a couple times, like just, you know, he just has this crazy imagination. He's like, I married Halle Berry today. Yes, I did. We had a beautiful wedding. <laughs> it was just, it was fantastic. Um, and he, so he takes you on his journey, basically. He is connecting with the other inmates. He's making unlikely friends. In, who are in the same situation that he is on death row. And you also see him meet Brian Stevenson, who becomes his lawyer and who helps get him off. Um, Brian Stevenson wrote Just Mercy and he works and has created this initiative to help people who are wrongfully accused and who are in the prison system wrongfully. Um, he's an amazing person. So you see him go through all this stuff. It's fantastic. I can't sing its praises enough. Five stars, 100% and very important. And this man is a huge inspiration and just a beautiful human being. And then I have one more book to talk about. Hmm. So this one I picked for my big book and it was a read along book that was for um, Elliot Brooks and Jesse May. And I decided to join in on this read along with them because I did have it on my shelf. So I wanted to read it. And that is The Ruin of King by Jen Lyons. This is uh, the first book in a series. I don't know what it's called, but it is the first book in a series. And I think there's three out right now. And I read 200 pages of this book and I DNF'd it. <laughs> I was not enjoying this book. It was really confusing. When I read other people's reviews of it, because I was having such a hard time and I, I couldn't put a word to it, and then a word I saw being used a lot to describe this was convoluted. And I completely agree with that. I was like, there's the word I was looking for. It's very convoluted. It's, it just goes this way and then this way and then this way. And then there's this little thing that happens, but doesn't make a ton of sense. And then there's this person and this person and this creature and what's happening. And I was getting so lost <laughs> a lot of the time. Um, I felt like I kind of had a little bit of a timeline, but I mean, 200 pages in and I was still sitting here going, I don't really understand anything that's happening. And I was reading this with my eyes. I was not listening to it. So I was taking my time. I was working on it and I just could not figure it out. And then from what I saw of other people's reviews, it doesn't get any better, <laughs> even into the second book. It just, it stays this way. And I just, I couldn't do it. One of the big problems I had was that it's dual timeline and the timelines are only one year apart. So in one timeline, our main character is 16. And then the past timeline, he was, no wait, yeah, 15. Yeah, 16 and 15. And he's telling one timeline and then someone else is telling another timeline. And I'm just like, okay, so you get some of it from his own personal perspective and his story and what's going on. And then the other timeline is told from someone completely different. And I'm like, 
Okay, so that didn't make a ton of sense to me. And when timelines are so close together, I have a hard time following. I had such a hard time figuring out which timeline we were in, even though it was completely different narrators. I was still was like, well, wait, is he, did this happen before this or did this happen after this? It was way too confusing for me. I just could not follow it. So I said, I'm going to go ahead and put this down and just say this is not for me. And that's okay. It's okay. Um, it makes me sad because I love this cover, but that's not a reason to keep the book right. So I'm going to get rid of this one and the sequel because obviously if I'm not reading this one, I'm not reading this one either. So these are going to go into my unhaul box. Um, yeah, but I, I mean, 200 pages, I tried, right? Like, oh well. Hey guys, those were all the books I read in January plus one DNF. And it was a fantastic reading month. I really was happy that I read everything on my TBR plus a little bit extra. So that was fantastic. I was really happy I was able to do that. Let me know down below if you guys have read any of these books. Let me know what your thoughts are. And uh, yeah, I'm ready to read my February TBR now. All right. I will talk to you guys soon. Have a great day.